Sins of the Father. A Klingon commander boards the Enterprise in an officer exchange program and turns out to have a hidden connection to Worf. I like how they did a callback to when Riker participated in an exchange onto a Klingon ship, and it had me looking forward to this episode right away. Your experience on board the Pach will prove invaluable during the commander's tour. The commander Kern is taking Riker's spot as first officer, and he specifically requested the Enterprise. Kern is played by Tony Todd with fake teeth. At one point, we even see him adjusting them. Tony Todd is best known for his roles in horror movies, and in particular, the Candyman movies, and he's cool. I thought he did a great job here. Agreed. Kern seems very prepared and is ready to start right away, but the music and the way everybody is reacting makes it seem like something is wrong when he's really done nothing wrong or out of place. I ask that I be allowed to take my station. Very well. You will accompany us to the bridge. The way it seemed to me was that everyone was upset because for the first time they actually have to do work. It's just different, which is the entire purpose of the exchange program, to expose them to the differences. It was a very close-minded approach by the crew right from the start. But from a humor perspective, I thought it worked because it wasn't overly stupid and there weren't a lot of dumb jokes. Except for Wesley being upset because Kern doesn't like him. He just doesn't seem to like me. Grow the f*** up, Wesley. I don't think Riker was supposed to seem antagonistic, but that's how he came off before Kern had even done or said anything. And eventually he even goes as far as to yell at him. This is not a Klingon ship, sir. Kern seems to be intentionally trying to piss Worf off, but Worf is keeping himself in check. Kern samples human delicacies, and we find out that Picard likes caviar, and it did verge on getting a little too dumb sometimes, but overall I thought it was pretty funny. Picard reveals that he keeps several cases of caviar on the ship. Our replicator has never done it justice, but I have managed to store a few cases for special occasions. How much caviar do you freaking need, Picard? How much are you eating it? Worf finally decides to confront Kern about his attitude, and Kern reveals that he is actually Worf's younger brother, which I was suspicious of at first. He tells Worf, The Klingon High Council has judged our father traitor to the Empire. My father is accused of aiding and abetting the Romulan attack on the Kitamar outpost. The charge has been made by Duras, the son of his father's rival, and it's Worf's responsibility to clear his father's name or answer for his crimes. It's good that the crew isn't busy, I guess, because Picard dropped everything to go help Worf out. Yeah, he's the captain. He should send somebody else to do it. I understand that he wants to support Worf, but it's not like they're that close or anything. Picard seems to play favorites a lot. Kern requests to be chosen as Worf's Chadich, who is someone who will fight on his behalf if need be. But Worf refuses to let Kern reveal that he's his brother in order to protect him. When they get down to the Klingon homeworld, there are some cool effects with a matte painting and a storm. I was impressed and surprised. Yeah, the lighting and production design really set them apart from other locations we've seen so far. It's a dramatic contrast to how cheap a lot of the early episodes felt. At the trial, Duras attempts to damage Worf's credibility due to him being part of Starfleet and not with other Klingons, but Picard defends him and has apparently lost control of the volume of his voice. I am here at my own request. I am Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Enterprise. Part of what made this episode work for me is the fact that the show has done a great job of getting us into Worf's character and background, so this episode really has impact and actually matters. I've enjoyed the episode centered around him. Agreed. Chancellor Kempek talks to Worf and tells him to leave and forget about the challenge, which was kind of suspicious. Return to your ship. Go back to your life. The challenge will be forgotten. Picard makes a smart move and assigns Data to do all the heavy research on the Kitamar outpost, so he must have learned from last time in the instance of command where four idiots were going through a 500,000 word treaty. Data's simple information search shows that those are gaps in the Intrepid's logs, missing information due to the range. That is where Moog's alleged transmission should be. Right in the middle of the gap? Is it a credit to Data's intelligence, or just a sloppy cover-up? I would vote for the latter based on the other evidence they find. Duras confronts Kern, who refuses to turn on Worf. Up until then, I really wasn't sure about his true motivations or whether he was telling the truth about any of it, and we find out that he is which honestly was the biggest surprise in the episode for me, and he ends up in sickbay after being attacked. And he is surprisingly saved by Beverly, so the bombshells just continue to drop in this episode. 
As more evidence mounts, Worf realizes that he's not just fighting against Duras, but a cover-up by the High Council itself. Picard accepts Worf's request to become his new Chadich. I was hoping he would choose the kid from the bonding. <laughs> <laughs> but Picard is badass right away. Then you must be ready to fight. Something Starfleet does not teach you. You may test that assumption at your convenience. The crew finds out there was another survivor of the Kittimer outpost besides Worf, and Riker very rudely interrupts the proceedings to notify Picard. Seconds before the shields fell. Riker to Captain Picard. Stand by. I liked how realistic that interruption was. Almost all the time, the communications happen in the quote, right moment in conversations, which realistically would not happen. Picard seeks out the woman, who is named Kalist, and she turns out to be reluctant to help, even though she has relevant knowledge. You know who she was? She was the rich lady from They Live. She's the one who goes, I've, I've got, got one, one that who can, can see. see. As Picard is leaving, he is attacked and awkwardly fights back, although he does manage to stab a Klingon. And then Kalis stabs the other as he is about to kill Picard. I'm impressed he did most of the shots himself and didn't use a stunt double. Duras refuses to let Kalis testify, and it's revealed that it's actually Duras's father and dishonor the Council is protecting. The warriors who captured the Romulan ship had learned of the treachery, but only the Council knew. So even though Worf's challenge was successful, the judgment will still stand in order to prevent a civil war. Worf's solution is to accept discommodation, which is basically stripping him and his family of all honor, defining him as a coward, and making him less than a person. But he and Kern will live, and the hope is that someday the truth will be known and his family's honor will be restored. Sins of the Father. Overall, a very good episode. The conclusion was a little unsatisfying just because I wanted to see Worf kill someone, but it worked in the episode. <laughs> I liked the introduction of Kern, and that he didn't turn out to be a bad guy. I liked that we got to see the Klingon homeworld, and I liked how it was depicted. I liked that the episode kept going in unpredictable directions without ever straining credibility. And I liked that everything made sense, and the humor worked, mostly without any dumb jokes. I would give it an A-. minus. I thought this was the best episode focusing on Worf so far. I give this one an A. Everything we know about the Klingons and the Empire so far has pretty much been Worf explaining it to other people. And I liked the shattering of that perception for him as well as for us. The values that he has based his life on are not followed by the leaders of the society those very values stemmed from. And that new struggle is going to give his character even more depth. I would argue that at this point he's the deepest character on the show, and he's probably my favorite. Tony Todd also did a great job of not seeming like a one-off temporary character, and there's no reason he wouldn't come back to continue this story. I liked how this episode didn't end and will really be an underlying part of every future Klingon interaction until it does. The unraveling of the conspiracy and reveals were presented in a non-cartoonish way. I also really liked the Klingon locations. This one is going to be a contender for my favorite episode of the season.